I, I took the opportunity when I went to Japan to try and learn Japanese because I thought, oh, here's my chance to be an adult second language learner. So to understand my experiences that I was still learning about at that time in terms of what it means to be bilingual, bicultural, or be a second language learner. So I thought, this is going to be perfect. I'm going to do that. So I taught myself the phonetic alphabet systems of Japanese, which are called hiragana and katakana. And there's 50 symbols or so, and same sounds, but just different symbols, because the hiragana is for native Japanese words, and the katakana is for Japanese words borrowed into Japanese. So they write them differently so you can tell that's not a native Japanese word. Anyway, um, I did all that and I thought, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm going to learn the language so quickly. It's going to be wonderful. Everything's going to be great. And I thought, okay, I know they also write in kanji, which is the pictographic system. But that's much more complicated, so I'll probably need a couple of weeks to master that. So I figured I'd just leave that one for after after my getting there, right? So from everything I'd read, everything I'd understood, I should have like acquired the language really, really fast. And I get to Japan and I realize, well, I can decode some things written in in the kana, but I didn't understand what I was reading. I like to say I was, you know, in Japan for about a minute and already hooked on phonics. So I, I thought, okay, I I need comprehension. And I wasn't getting any comprehensible input because I didn't have a parent holding my hand where I could say, how do you say this? Why is that like this? How come that's like this? And, and so on. So I felt lost and quickly, quickly, it didn't take me, but I don't know, a couple of hours to realize I'm no longer an adult. This is really a shocking thing. I'm in a strange country and I have the capacity of about a six month old child. I can't do the things that I could do without even thinking here in the United States in Japan because I can't communicate. I had no facility with which to do it. And if you try to use a book for translation or even the, the cell phones for whatever, that's probably a little better these days, but you didn't have any of that technology. I couldn't, couldn't do anything. And so, I remember slowly feeling marginalized, depressed. You know, be, I, I'm like, I can't go out and order food. I, I, I can't go to, you know, uh, a person ask for directions on how to get someplace. I would have had to explore and it was difficult and it was embarrassing. But the biggest thing was that I, I remember feeling how I had lost my competency as an adult. And that was very strange. And I didn't realize, you know, this is what happens. People who come who are well educated, they, they don't, they don't, they're not able to bring that same level of competence with them. Not immediately. It takes time to develop. And I got a greater appreciation for what it was like to be an immigrant to the United States and encounter a culture that you don't understand, a language you can't speak, and try to somehow manage your way in all of that. So it was remarkable. It, things did turn around eventually, uh, made some friends. They sort of took care of me and things got terrific. And uh, uh, I really enjoyed my experience there. It was phenomenal and I would not trade it for anything. But that early experience really taught me we can never, never, never underestimate how difficult it is to come from some other place and speaking some other language and try to make a life there.